Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about some current events, breaking news, you might say, related to Sony, a topic that I guess we've covered a few times on this channel, and uh, we will be continuing to cover Sony, so stay tuned for a future review, by the way. This is an article that broke this morning, uh, written by Jason Schreier, who you might remember from The Last of Us 2 uh, review that I did because he was the journalist who broke the story on a lot of the crunch culture at Naughty Dog and how difficult it had been for them to, to make the game. I should mention that because this story, or at least certain details that came out of the story that people are really blowing up about at the moment, I wouldn't believe them if they came from another source. The fact that he's saying it means that I think he's probably not making this up or anything like that. I think we can definitely trust this article. So, what's being reported on here? Well, it's mostly about how Sony has been sort of compressing and condensing their development teams in order to really only focus on big blockbuster releases. If you've been paying attention, there's some pretty clear evidence of this. Sony's Japanese studio has been shut down or more or less made so small that it, the key people have all left. People who are responsible for a lot of iconic PlayStation games in the past, but not really a whole lot of stuff recently. The last major thing that they did was Gravity Rush, which does have a following, but never really took off in the way that other Sony franchises have. They also talk about how Studio Bend, which is based in Oregon and made the game Days Gone, was actually having a lot of trouble convincing the studio to greenlight a sequel. I mean, the game, you know, it didn't get as great a reception as some of Sony's other projects, but there's no indication that it sold poorly or anything like that. What's most surprising is that they actually wanted Bend to, instead of making a sequel to Days Gone, just be split up into different groups and help Naughty Dog make different projects that they're currently working on. These projects are reportedly a multiplayer game of some kind and an Uncharted game. But it seems that within the last month, at least some of the Studio Bend leadership was able to convince higher-ups to take them off of the Uncharted project, and now they actually are starting to prepare a brand new IP. Not Days Gone 2, but just something different, which I would say is a good thing. And if you want another example of how smaller projects don't seem to get a lot of love at Sony, you can look at Media Molecule and Dreams, because that's a game that was honestly not marketed very well at all. I never really understood what it was until after it had released, and there's a lot of people out there who love it, but it just didn't seem to get any marketing or attention, and as a result, I think that most people don't even know that it exists, honestly. I think some of this factors into the obsession with blockbusters that Sony appears to have. They need the games to be big and massive, and they all kind of look similar. They're very photorealistic and all that. This, these are the qualities that are seemingly important to Sony Brass. And it's okay to have a couple games like that because you can have games that are all photorealistic or narrative heavy but still play very differently. The concern is that by smothering these smaller projects, by not setting aside smaller teams and all that, you are potentially stifling creativity and you're stifling the potential for new talent because you can foster that talent by giving them smaller projects that are less of a risk because the budgets aren't as high, etc. And then if you like what those people are doing and it's paying off, you give them bigger stuff. And it seems that one of those teams was not really given much to work with recently. That's sort of the main element of this article. There is a division of Sony in San Diego called the Visual Arts Service Group, and they don't really make games, they just sort of assist the various Sony teams in finishing them by providing what I'm assuming are art graphics and the like to all of these projects. And support studios exist, I don't think there's anything wrong with a support studio, you know, it's, it's you know, you gotta get paid somehow. But members of this division were starting to request getting more attention, getting the ability to actually lead their own project. The director of the Visual Arts Service Group put together a, a team of about 30 developers, and they formed a unit within Sony. And what they wanted to make for Sony was a remake of The Last of Us. 
This apparently was greenlit to a degree because they were working on this for a while, but the team never was allowed to expand. They weren't really given much of a budget. And according to this article, Sony never fully acknowledged their existence, which raises a lot of questions. So this team, which never had an official name or designation, essentially pitched The Last of Us remake because they were pretty sure that Sony's brass would approve of it. Not because it was necessarily a creative or interesting idea. Remaking older games for the PS5 was seen as a safe bet, and Sony's definitely been doing things like that lately because they did the Shadow of the Colossus remake, the Demon Souls remake as well. I find that sort of an interesting trend, remaking games not necessarily because they deserve a full, polished remake, but more just because it's a way to get them to look shiny and pretty and you could sell them for, I guess, $70 now at this point. It's sort of an interesting trend and Sony is one of the companies at the forefront of it in my opinion. So the idea of that happening for The Last of Us 1 is very surprising. It does say in this article that originally they wanted to remake the first Uncharted game, but they couldn't agree on it because it would have been too much work. I suppose they wanted to redesign the controls and all that stuff to make it play like a newer game, whereas with The Last of Us 1, you wouldn't really have to redesign the controls at all, at least in theory. So this project was in development for a while. Even with a small team and a small budget, they were putting together some demo slices and showing the rest of the company. Eventually it got to the point where some new management got involved and they saw this project and thought, this is just gonna be way too expensive to make. There's no reason that the graphical level needs to be this enhanced because apparently they needed to make an entire new graphical engine for this. They just didn't think that that was necessary at all. The budget was going to be so much higher than the other remakes that were being developed. And because of this, they decided, hey, we don't want you guys working on this anymore. But we still want the remake to be made. So they essentially disbanded or pushed this small team aside and said, Naughty Dog will take care of it. So yeah, it sounds like this idea of remaking The Last of Us 1 is still going to happen, but it's going to happen under the supervision of Naughty Dog rather than a potentially new team of developers. And I can understand Sony's decision to do that because they trust Naughty Dog a lot more. It makes sense to have them involved. My concern is just more that they had this team of people who'd been working for a while and trying to prove themselves, and now that team is apparently disbanded. They didn't even seem to think that it might be worth giving them something else to work on that didn't have as much of a budget. But it seems like that's just not their MO anymore. It's, now it's all about making blockbusters. There's no room for smaller projects where you can foster talent and develop an audience of people who maybe aren't into the big blockbusters. Maybe they want something a little different. So that's sort of the full story of this article, and it's a little unfortunate that Sony seems to be kind of constricting themselves at this point. I hope that they can maybe change course on this, or at least find some way to continue making new ideas, because I'm not really enthusiastic about the prospect of more and more Sony blockbusters, especially when it comes to Naughty Dog, because I'm, I'm kind of tired of that stuff. I, it's, it's not really my, my cup of tea, you could say. Obviously, the big part of this article that's gone all over the place is the fact that they're remaking The Last of Us, and I have to agree with the consensus that I've seen. I think remaking The Last of Us 1 is a terrible idea, and I think there's almost nothing to be gained from doing that, because The Last of Us visually is a game that I think still holds up. I don't think it's necessary to do a remake of it at all, especially since I highly doubt this remake would play very differently. Maybe they would add one or two features from The Last of Us 2, but that's kind of my point. Those two games don't play that differently, despite the amount of time that's gone by. And so I just don't see a reason to even bother. You can get The Last of Us remastered, and you can play it, and it doesn't feel as dated as you might think. Remaking it just for the graphics seems totally pointless. I, I just don't get it. I don't think it needs to happen. Maybe in 10 years I would think differently, but right now it would just seem like a very soulless way to do a cash grab. Games like Shadow of the Colossus and Demon's Souls that Sony remade recently, you could at least argue those were cult games and they weren't mass appeal games and they were trying to preserve them because they were on older systems. 
That argument doesn't quite work for this one. And there are so many other games in Sony's back catalog that people would much rather see remade. I don't have anything inherently against remakes. I'm looking forward to some upcoming remakes, such as the Mass Effect collection and the Nier remake. You know, I'm looking forward to that stuff. But I can't envision a scenario where I would be interested in a remake of something like The Last of Us. But maybe you disagree with me and you're actually really looking forward to it. I mean, hey, let me know and let me know what you think of Sony and all that stuff down in the comments. I'm about to start the recording process for the next review script. I'm not entirely sure how long the video will be, but if I had to guess, I would say it's going to be a bit shorter than the Resident Evil 6 one because the game itself is kind of short. But stay tuned for that because I hope to have it out this month. Thank you for watching.